He died in silence, 7,000 years ago in a cold cave in northern Spain. A hunter, a wanderer, one of the last of his kind. His skin was dark, his hair was black, but his eyes were bright blue. A rare mutation shimmered in his DNA, one shared today by millions, yet unknown to him. He wasn't the first, but he is one of the earliest we've ever found. Proof that blue eyes began long before cities, writing or light skin. A forgotten man carrying a spark that still lives in your eyes. Who was he? Where did those eyes come from? To answer that, we need to go way back. Let's start simple. Your eye color is decided by melanin. That's the same pigment that gives color to your skin and hair. More melanin in the iris equals brown eyes. Less melanin equals blue eyes. But blue eyes don't actually contain blue pigment. They look blue for the same reason the sky looks blue. Light enters the iris and bounces off the back. Because there's little melanin to absorb that light, it scatters and reflects blue. So blue eyes aren't colored blue, they just appear that way. It's an optical trick. And it only happens when one gene changes how your body makes melanin. That gene is called HERC2, but it doesn't work alone. It controls another gene, OCA2. OCA2 helps produce melanin in your iris. Thousands of years ago, a small change happened inside that gene. This tiny mutation turns down the activity of OCA2. Less melanin is made in the iris, and just like that, blue eyes appear. This mutation is recessive. You need one copy from each parent for your eyes to be blue. If you only get one, your eyes will most likely stay brown. But if both copies carry the switch, your eyes change. Somewhere between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago, a tiny mutation appeared in a single human, not in a city, not in a kingdom, but in a small, scattered group of hunter-gatherers living in the forests near the northern shores of the Black Sea in what is now Ukraine or southern Russia. It was the Mesolithic era. The Ice Age had ended. The glaciers had melted. Europe was green again, wild, cold and full of life. There were no farms, no wheat, no herds, just stone tools, firelight and constant movement. These people followed the rivers. They hunted red deer. They fished in shallow lakes. They knew the land by smell, not by maps. And then, without warning, it happened. A mutation in a gene called HERC2, a small switch that turned off melanin production in the iris. The result? Blue eyes for the first time in human history. It didn't cause pain, it didn't change survival, but it changed appearance, it stood out. That single mutation, called RS12913832, is still with us today. Every person with blue eyes, from Scandinavia to South Asia, from Irish villages to American suburbs, carries this exact same change. It didn't happen more than once. It didn't evolve separately in different places. One person, one genetic event. Every blue eye in the world can be traced back to that one ancestor who lived and died in the shadows of the Mesolithic world. 
Their name is lost, but their legacy, you may be carrying it right now in your eyes. Thousands of years later, that mutation turns up again in the bones of the ancient dead. In a mountain cave in northern Spain, archaeologists uncover the skeleton of a Mesolithic man. He's named Labraña I. He lived around 7,000 years ago, and his DNA shocked the scientific world. Because he had dark skin, he had black hair, but he carried the mutation, the same one. He had blue eyes that shattered old assumptions that blue eyes appeared only in light-skinned farming populations. Labraña was a hunter, a forager, a man of the forest, and his eyes were already blue, but he wasn't alone. Far to the north, in Motala, Sweden, scientists unearthed another group of hunter-gatherers, about 7,700 years old. They too carried the blue eye mutation, but unlike Labraña, they had lighter skin. This tells us something important. Blue eyes and light skin evolved separately. And only later, through migration, contact and mixing, did they begin to appear together. The mutation started in the East, but its story unfolds across all of prehistoric Europe. The blue eye mutation likely began as a random genetic event. The earliest carriers lived in post-Ice Age Europe, where the sun's intensity was lower. Some scientists suggest that in these regions, lighter pigmentation may have offered a slight advantage in producing vitamin D. This idea aligns with other evolutionary patterns seen in skin and hair color. Still, blue eyes appear to offer no direct survival advantage. Unlike skin color, they don't significantly affect vitamin D synthesis. Their spread likely followed other paths. In prehistoric communities, rare traits often drew attention. Blue eyes may have become desirable through sexual selection. Their distinct appearance made them stand out possibly increasing chances of being chosen as a mate. The founder effect also played a role. When small groups with the mutation became isolated, due to migration, geography or climate, their genetic traits became more common within those groups. Over time, the mutation drifted across Europe. It moved not with conquest or survival, but through attraction, isolation and chance. One random change, carried by ordinary people, quietly shaped the genetic landscape of an entire continent. Today, blue eyes are most common in Europe, but not all of it. The highest concentrations are found in the north and east, especially around the Baltic Sea. In Estonia, nearly 89% of people have blue or grey eyes. In Finland, it's around 85%. In Sweden, about 78%. In Lithuania and Latvia, over 75%. This cluster is sometimes called the Blue Eye Belt of Europe, a region where the mutation didn't just survive, it dominated. These were once isolated populations, fewer invaders, less genetic mixing. But blue eyes don't stop at the Baltics. In Denmark, over 60% of people have blue eyes. In Germany, about 40% to 60%, depending on the region.
Even in the British Isles, blue eyes are common. Around 50% of Irish people have blue eyes. In Scotland, about 48%. In England, roughly 30 to 40%, depending on the region. But as you move south, the numbers drop. In Spain, only about 16% of people have blue eyes. In Italy, around 14%. In Greece, less than 10%. This mirrors ancient migrations. Southern Europe saw more influence from Neolithic farmers from the Near East and later from North African and Middle Eastern empires. These groups brought brown eye dominant genes with them. Blue eyes are rarer in Asia, the Middle East and Africa. But they're not absent. In parts of Afghanistan and northern Pakistan, small pockets of people have blue or green eyes, likely from ancient Indo-European mixing. Among some Ashkenazi Jewish populations, blue eyes are more frequent, likely due to European ancestry. In North Africa, especially among Berber and Tuareg groups, blue or green eyes occasionally appear, likely due to historical contact with Europe. Today, global migration has carried the blue eye gene to every continent. In the United States, about 27% of people have blue eyes, down from nearly 50% in the early 20th century. In Australia and Canada, blue eyes are still common, especially among people of Northern European descent. In South America, South Africa, and parts of the Middle East, blue eyes appear in mixed populations. Blue eyes are more than a color. They're a trace of deep human history, a silent mutation that began with one person and traveled through time to reach you. This isn't just about genetics. It's about who we are, where we come from, and how a single strand of DNA can connect millions of people. If this story sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and explore more. On this channel, we uncover the genetic origins of entire countries from the ancient migrations behind Irish DNA to the hidden layers in Italian, Greek, German, Basque, Spanish and Scottish ancestry. Every population has a story written in its genes and each story brings us closer to understanding the human journey. So hit subscribe and keep exploring the DNA of nations. One mutation, one migration, one video at a time.